Hey there, guitar fanatics. A while back, I did a lesson on Southern rock guitar licks, and it's one of the most watched videos on my channel. So I thought it might be a good time to break down a couple of iconic Southern rock songs. I thought a great place to start would be the classic Leonard Skinner tune, Simple Man. It is a great example of what you can do with three chords, some creativity, and a great lyrical message. We're gonna break down the clean arpeggiated rhythm parts, the heavier rhythm riffs, and I'm even gonna teach you the guitar solo. So grab a glass of sweet tea, head out to the rocking chair on the front porch. I'm Charlie Long, let's play some guitar. Okay, while there are multiple guitar parts in this song, Simple Man has only three chords that are repeated throughout the song. C, G, and A minor. The part we're going to learn first is the arpeggiated intro, which also plays throughout the verses. Now, if you're a beginner, this is going to seem like a lot of notes, but what I want you to keep in mind that these are chord forms that you're probably familiar with. You're going to be able to use open position chords for the entire thing with one little twist. There's also a formula, if you will, to the pattern that I'm going to explain, so hopefully that's going to make it a lot easier to memorize. So the song, it's a slow 60 beats a minute. And this part is arpeggiated in 16th notes. That means we're going to be counting 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a, we're breaking each note, beat up into four notes. So we start out with a couple of notes walking into the C chord. We're going to play an open A and B, the open A and this B at the second fret of the A string, which I alternate pick by the way. And now we're into our C chord. So we're gonna play C, skip to the open G, and then an E on the D string, and then C again. Next, we skip over to the C note on the B string, open G, E on the D string, and then back to the open G. So what we did there, we played the root of the chord, we skipped over two strings to G and then descended through the E and C. That's followed by a skip over to the C note on the B string, then open G, the E note, and back to G. So in each of these four note groupings, we've got a string skip that's followed by notes played on three successive descending strings. That pattern, it's gonna be the same for all three chords, even though your fretting hand obviously is gonna be moving around. Now, as far as picking goes, those pickup notes were alternate picked. And then when we get into that C chord, I'm gonna be playing a downstroke followed by two upstrokes. So I hit the C root note with the downstroke. Then we've got that big skip over to the G note and the E. So I'm gonna hit that C root note with a downstroke. I'm gonna skip over to the G. I'm gonna hit the G and the E with an upstroke. Now, C, we're gonna play with a downstroke again. Then I'm gonna go all the way over to the C at the B string, and I'm gonna use an upstroke to play the C and the G. And then I've got the E, I'm gonna hit with a downstroke and G with an upstroke, so that E and G alternate picked. So it looks like this. That picking pattern is pretty much the same throughout this entire part. Also with one small variation, the second time through the A minor chord, we'll get to that. Now the next chord is G. We're gonna play the G bass note, skip a string over to the open D, hit the B note, and then back to G on that low E. Now from there, we're gonna skip all the way over to the open G string, followed by open D. We then play the B note, followed by another open D. That's the G chord. Now we get into A minor. The first time through, we follow the pattern of the C and G chords exactly as far as picking. So we're gonna play open A, skip over to the A on the G string, 
play the E note, and then open A again. Then we're gonna jump all the way to the C on the B string, play A, E, and A again. For the second time through the A minor chord, we're gonna hit that open A string again, but this time we're gonna skip all the way to the C note on the B string. We're gonna play the A and E notes, and then we're gonna introduce something new. We're gonna put an extra note, a G note, on the top of our A minor chord, and we're gonna play that note with our pinky. Technically, that makes the chord an A minor seven if you're interested. So we skip over to that G on the high E string and then play C on the B string. And then we're gonna drop down to those pickup notes that we played to get the whole part going, the A and the B on the A string. And the riff starts all over again. So that's the intro. And as we mentioned before, it's played in the verses also. Let's run through it a couple of times really slowly and then we're gonna take it up to speed. Here we go. Speed it up just a little bit. Cool, so there's another slightly different arpeggiated part that's played under that because Leonard Skinner had like 13 guitar players, but we're gonna go ahead and move on to the distorted part that is underneath the chorus. Check it out. So this part, it's all about power chords. In the first measure, we've got a C chord with our index finger at the C on the A string at the third fret. I've got the D string at the fifth fret with my third finger, and I've got my pinky at the fifth fret of the G string. For the G chord, we're going to drop that whole thing down a string set and play the same shape. Now the next measure, we've got what would be an A minor. It's got an open A string. And then we're going to fret the second frets of the D and G string. I'm using my index finger to do both. Let's get used to moving through those shapes by hitting those chords every two beat. So we've got one, two, three, four. C, two, G, four, A minor, two, A minor, four, C, two, G, four, A minor, two, A minor, four. That's the basic pulse of the rhythm part. Now, there's some little what I call chucka chucka parts in there that make the rhythm part sound a little more driving, and we want to get those down too. So we play the C chord on the one, and we're gonna hold that through the first half of beat two. Again, we're gonna need to break that second beat into 16th notes and count two E anda. And on the anda part of the beat, we're gonna play the C power chord again, and then the G bass note. That would sound like this. One, two E anda. Then on three, we're gonna hit the G power chord and we're gonna hold that through the first half of beat four. Three, four. And on the and a part of the beat four, we play the G power chord and then an open E string. That sets us up to move right into that A power chord. Here's that first measure with C and G. One, two E, and a, three, four E, and a. So we go ahead and hit that A power chord. We hold that through the first beat. And again, we're gonna break the second beat into 16th notes. And we're gonna hold that A chord for only the first 16th note. So the downbeat of two. 
on E and A, we're gonna play the open G string, the G at the third fret, and open E again. So we've got this. One, two, and A. One, two, and A. On the third beat, we're gonna hit the A chord again. And we're gonna hold it through the first half of beat four. Now, on the and a part of beat four, we've got a cool little rock rhythm trick where we hit the muted strings. Now check out my left hand. I've already got it in position to play the C power chord again because that's what comes next. But I'm just resting my fingers across the strings. I'm not pressing down at all. That's how we get those chucka chucka accents as I call them. So on the and, I do a downstroke on the muted strings and an upstroke to hit the C note on the A string. So it's the and uh, and it sounds like this. And then we're back into the C power chord for the start of the next measure. We repeat those two measures exactly. And now the next two times we're gonna do something a little different and very cool on the C and G chords. We're gonna hit the C power chord just as before. And we hold it through the first half of beat two. On the and of beat two, we're gonna play it again. And then we're gonna slide all the way up to 10th fret with our index finger. We're gonna keep the third finger in the same shape on the D string, but we're gonna slide that third finger up to the 12th fret. And then we're gonna reach over with the index finger and we're gonna fret the 10th frets of the low E and A string. So here we go. And that gives us a different voicing of the G chord with D in the bass. And we're gonna hold that through the first half of the fourth beat. On the and of four, we're gonna hit that chord again and slide it downward. And then we're gonna play our A chord measure exactly as the same before. Putting that whole thing together and I'll count it through the first time. So here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, and a three. Four, and a one. Two, and a three. Four. One, two, and a three. Four, and a one. Two, and a three. Four. The second half of the chorus, we've got one, two, and three. Four, and one. Two, and three. Four. All right, cool, so that's the distorted chorus part. Let's move on to some single note riffs. Now, there's a melodic passage that gets played after the first verse and it gets repeated after the guitar solo. So it starts off with the same two 16th note pickup notes as the arpeggiated clean part. So we've got A and B on the A string. Now, on the downbeat of one, we're gonna play a C note that we're gonna hold through the downbeat of beat two. Now we're gonna break beat two into 16th notes and on the E and we play an E note at the seventh fret of the A string and we slide into that from the fifth fret. Now it's a very fast slide that we call a grace note slide. So we're gonna hear the note at the fifth fret for just an instant. We're then gonna slide from the E to the D at the fifth fret, and then play C at the third fret. On beat three, we're gonna play a G note at the third fret of the low E string. And again, we're gonna hold that through the down beat of four. We're gonna break the fourth beat into 16th notes again 
on the E and a, we're gonna play the same three notes as before. Our slide into E, slide down to D, and then play C. And on the downbeat of the next measure, we're gonna play the A note at the fifth fret of our low E string. And we keep up with that every other beat being broken into 16th notes. On E and a, we're gonna play open E, G at the third fret, then open E again. On beat three, we're gonna hit G at the third fret of the low E string. We're gonna slide up to the fifth fret A. And we're gonna hold that A until the and of four. Now, the slide from G to A, it isn't a grace note. It's more of an actual 16th note. On the and uh, of four, we're gonna play our A and B pickup notes, and we're gonna repeat those two measures. Here it is, nice and slow. One, two, three, four. that is just a really cool melodic rock guitar part. There's a nice use of those slides and grace notes. If you haven't played a lot of single note guitar, it's a great way to get started. And it's also a great study in how to orchestrate guitar parts with multiple guitar players in a band. So that's Simple Man. Lots of great stuff in there. We've got clean arpeggiated sounds mixed with tasteful distorted guitar a really cool passionate solo, and those nice melodic lines between some of the verses. Add a great lyrical message about living a simple, honest lifestyle, and you've got all the ingredients for a Southern rock classic. I hope you enjoyed the video and got a lot out of it. As always, thanks for checking out the channel. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel for more great guitar stuff every week. Work hard, play hard, have a lot of fun, never stop learning. And until next time, happy guitaring.